My documentary is going to be taking a look at the work of artist Jack Lanouette. He's a Falls Church-based soft sculptor, and he makes large-scale Halloween and Christmas decorations out of decorative foam. His artwork caught my eye from the roadside. I pulled over to visit his Polar Acres display on Christmas Eve, and he took me down into his basement, and he showed me his evil pizzas, and... I said, I gotta get this guy on TV. A friend of, and I up in Maine had a haunted house in his garage, and we could never get enough skulls. But then I figured out how to make a mold, and then you can have more skulls than you know what to do with. Every year I put on these displays, mainly Halloween and Christmas. We got a few miscellaneous Valentines and Easter things, but not much. And I've made sort of a walkthrough where people can come, they're allowed to walk up on the property, take a look, and all the sculptures are the main attraction of that. As far as how many sculptures I got for Christmas, easily 50 in the very least and probably about the same for Halloween. I keep it here in the basement mostly and some things over the garage. It kind of eliminates any other uses for the basement except for, of course, I make things down there. You roll out the foam, it's, it comes in a roll, there's different thicknesses, trace the pieces, and then I have a compressor that sprays a certain spray adhesive, it's called K-Grip. Spray the pieces together and it creates a, a form, a hollow form. Once you kind of make up the features, you can put a skin over it. Same kind of foam, different thickness, and then that gives it a whole look. That's why you don't look at it and see a lot of glue seams. In the old days, I would have tons of new things each year. But you have to consider all that as part of the initial setup the following year. So it gets to a point where it's harder to make anything new. Someday I'm gonna try to refurbish, especially the ones that I really like. This is the dome of like a little igloo house. It could use repairs. It doesn't need much, but there are definitely cracks and things that I could patch up. Okay, okay, that's there, good. There's no respite between Halloween and Christmas. It's pretty much full on from end of October until early December. First, it's usually checking Christmas lights that I leave up, making sure they work, what do I have to replace. Then it's getting all of the set pieces out, the wood to make the backdrops and the little houses. Here, okay. And then from there, it's Christmas trees. I have about, I would say, 12 to 15 artificial Christmas trees. I like to have some Christmas trees with faces because that's not really something that you often see at Christmas. It's more of a Halloween thing. And then from there, it's putting fake snow down. Then the sculptures can come out. It can be very weird to know how you go from an empty yard and you see that for most of the year and then once it's up it feels like it just belongs there and it's always been there. I think the feeling that I really want to evoke is nostalgia. Like you're walking through that little tabletop Christmas village that you used to set up. And I've been told that, oh yeah, you're a uh, institution, a pillar and whatever. I don't think about that when I put it out, or at least not when I started. But yes, a lot of people have told me around here that it, it's a big part of their holiday tradition. 
or it's a big part of the community and it seems to reach even outside of the community. I would love to get some land, preferably somewhere a little more rural, where I could open up a holiday fun park, like a Santa's workshop and a haunted hay rides and have them sort of both side by side so that I wouldn't have to go crazy changing one to the other, because as you can see, there's not enough time. You know, somewhere that I could really go all out and where I would have room to really make it something elaborate. So if you hear anything like that, let me know. <laughs> Thank you.